Hello and good afternoon and welcome back to another episode of The Classroom. I'm kind of in a run and gun environment here as Sarah and I are traveling, but a lot of you guys liked the color that I did on the previous video of the why you should shoot 35 millimeter film. I got like the most comments ever on just the coloring itself and a lot of requests to show you how I did that grade. So this video is going to jumpstart the color grading part of this channel, which I've never done before. So bear with me with a little bit of quirks as we work them out, but I'm gonna work with you coloring this shot. And you see this shot on the screen and together you and I are gonna go through and just color this shot exactly as I had colored it to get the final look that you see on the screen here. So without further ado, a lot going on here. So let's go ahead and dive in. But before we do so, if you find this video helpful or any of the other videos on this channel helpful, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you would like more color grading tutorials on this channel, leave a comment down below of specific looks or if yes or if no. So let's go ahead and dive in and check out what we've got going on here. So I've got this one clip of me holding the camera, which I kind of use as the thumbnail. So let's go ahead and pick like a nice uh, hero frame, I guess right there is gonna be good because you can see the camera, you can see myself. So that's what we're gonna work with. And we're gonna go through a handful of nodes and I don't want it to get discouraging, but I do have one node that I kind of go to to just make everything a little bit easier. And I just called it node tree. And then there we go. We've got all the nodes that we're probably gonna follow here. And I do typically follow this structure for all of my coloring. Sometimes I skip things, sometimes I add things, and you're gonna see that as we move in here. So a little bit of a rundown. You've got a noise reduction node, um, contrast, then your saturation and primaries. You balance the shot out, your white balance. You wanna make everything white if it's too warm or warmer if it's too cool. So balance that, then you apply your look. Then you're gonna to start to really customize the look here in the HSL and key. You might select particular colors, HSL slider, so on and so forth. Then once you got that done, you're really gonna adjust your look. And then this, this is where you start to customize things. I mean, you got the vignette and then a couple low soft, which we're gonna to get to sharpening. And then the glow and the grain really solidify this look, I think really well. And then a couple of final adjustments as we see them fit. So that's a lot going on. So we've got this selected here and let's go ahead and dive in with what I did first. And what I like to do is looking at this waveform, it's very tight and it's very closed off. So that means it's very hard to split once you're trying to select your highlights, your shadows, your midtones. So what I do first is I add in a fair amount of contrast. Oh, let's turn that back on. So, I mean, it always helps to do the extremes, see what each tool you're doing or you're using is really doing. So obviously way too much, um, but I like to sit on this shot right around, I don't know, 1 1.35, I think that should be pretty good. Um, and then this pivot tool works hand in hand with the contrast. So I'm recording, right? Yeah, I'm recording, <laughs> good. So this pivot tool works hand in hand with the contrast and it really shows where that contrast is going to split. And you can see that on the waveform. You can see it like shrink and then grow and then stretch down to the bottom. So it really selects which part you want to, or which part of the image you want to go which way when you apply the contrast, if that makes sense. So that pivot, I'm gonna sit probably right here around that 3.5 range as well. And I like it there because that's what's really gonna split. I mean, if you go exaggerated, really gonna split my face from the highlights to the shadows. So that's why I went there. So let's bring that back into that 3.6 range or 1.36 range. So there we go. We're already getting a little bit of contrast in there, but with log footage, I'm shooting on a black magic pocket 4K in the gen five color science, which is why you're getting everything so flat. Um, you're gonna lose a lot of the saturation. So saturation is what I do next here alongside my primaries. And I bring my saturation again, bring it to the extreme, see what it's doing. I like to sit always right at about 74 with my saturation on my pocket footage. So there we go. And then my pr uh, primary wheels, I really use to hone in on where my highlights are going, where my shadows are going and getting that exposure perfectly right on my entire image. So to do that, I go over to my primaries wheels. And what we're gonna do is, typically I start with the gamma, just to like bring, uh, bring up my waveform just a little bit. And my goal for the gamma and gain is just to smooth off that highlight roll off. So I'll bring up the gamma a little bit 
and then I'll bring the gain down and I kind of massage the two there. So let's bring the gamma up to about, I like where it's at right there. We're still getting a good amount of exposure. And then my gain where it once was there, you see it looks a little bit digital here and it just looks sharp if you want to explain it that way. So I'll bring the gain down and I'll work it just that so you see how it softens out a lot of these harsh, um, these harsh highlights. So I'll bring that down to about 0.87, 0 0.86, somewhere in there. Yeah, cause that's, that's starting to look really soft. And of course you see this huge gap. There's not a lot of shadows. There's not a lot of low end, which is where I then go to my lift. And that's where I'm going to bring down this contrast and really bring in the contrast even more. Um, so let's bring that down to about, I don't know, let's do, let's do about right there. Oh, what happened? I had it right there. Bam. So there we go. So now we're starting to get even more contrast, a, a nice smoother roll off in your highlights and some shadowing and some contrast and saturation. And it's all starting to look really good. Now, you want to set yourself up for success when creating the look, so you want to make sure your shot is white balanced. So to do that, a lot of the times, I'll go in over to my parade. And when everything is white balanced, I mean, you can see, if you want to make everything really warm, see how the reds go really high and the blues go really low. Opposite to that, really cool, the blues go really high on that parade and then the reds go really low. So you want to make those even just to make sure that your shot is white balanced. And this pretty much is even. I mean, you've got a little bit more uh, warmth on that low end. So I think I might just take the offset tool and just, you know, make a few changes right there, just to cool it down a little bit. And maybe overall, like right in that middle range, I might take the gamma down the slightest bit. So honestly, not too many adjustments, but you just see that green warm tint, especially in the shadows kind of goes away. The sky gets pretty even. Uh, as we do that. So now we're really in good shape to add in our creative look. And this is where we start to get this stylized look that we're going for. And I, my motivation for this kind of gritty filmish green look was that we're talking about film cameras and that's, you associate a lot of like greens and uh, like nice smooth soft filmic roll offs in this grain. And that was my inspiration for this look that we we're going for. So again, we're going to go for that green look overall throughout the entire image. So in our look, typically, again, I start with the gamma. That's what I typically do. In this gamma, I'm going to start bringing, and I want to keep this middle range pretty warm because that's where a lot of my skin tones are going to sit. And you're probably looking at that like it looks awful and muddy and red and whatever, but that's where we contrast that with. Let's go over to the lift. And then you see when I pull that down, I mean exaggerated, you start to cool that off as opposed to what it was before. So let's pull down that lift just a little bit. And I don't know where we want to go. I like it somewhere in here. Let's go right there. Let's go right there for now. And then you start to see already you're getting a nice look with these greens and then left over we've got our gain which is just going to affect the highlights primarily or the high end or that higher third of your waveform of your exposure so let's go ahead and take this just a little bit more into that warm green area and let's see let's see I think I like it right about there. Yeah, I do like that. So let's, let's call it right there. And you're already starting, I mean, compared to what it was before when you balance it out, you're starting to get this green gritty look, but we do have a lot to go. So in here, this is where I kind of really fine tune the look that I just previously touched on, whether it's uh, oftentimes it's the skin tones or particular colors. Um, say I wanted to add in another node parallel to it and I really want to target just the strap, which let's do that for fun as well. But first I want to target my skin tones. And I mean, they might be a little bit green. They're pretty spot on, but I'm going over to my levels and just selecting that skin tone range. So a lot of like that yellows and reds area. And I'm just going to bring, I mean, see how that 
attacks just my skin tone. So a lot, a lot less is a lot more here. Let's, let's sit it right about there and very subtle difference in my skin, but it just brings in a little bit of that nice pinkish warmth without looking green and washed out. Um, and then let's say, go ahead, I want to bring out the red in that strap just a little bit. So I'm going to go to my key selector, hit this here, find a nice red, hit this effects thing. And then of course you're selecting that. I'll do it quick here, but let's go right in that range. So let's say we want to, we want to change that hue just a little bit and make it a little bit more magenta. Yeah, I like it right there. Maybe the saturation. We want to bring up the saturation. There we go. That's a great time and place to add in a little bit more saturation on the strap. So I don't want to spend too much time on that, but now I want to move into this look adjustment, which is really where like you've got the look down, you made some fine tuning tweaks to either your face or colors or whatever in the image. And now you really want to adjust this and just develop this look a little bit more towards the final product. So very minute changes we're going to be doing here, but I kind of want to develop more of this overall green look, obviously a little bit more exaggerated than we like there, but we're going to, of course, start to look at where we want to go with it. And let's see, in this gamma, I think I want to go, I think I want to go like right about there. I like that. And then up in the gain here, again, it's going to affect a lot of the brighter part of the image. Um, and let's see, very subtle. Let's go about, let's bring it over a little bit more. Yeah, now you're starting to get that green. And let's say right there. I'm happy with that. Definitely getting these greens throughout the entire image and putting it all together. Um, so now, next I want to move over into this vignette tab, which I really like to use a vignette to pull the focus onto the subject, whether it's a product or whether it's an individual, an actor, talent, or myself. So to do that, I go over into this little radial mask section, that window section. I hit a nice little circle and I'll drag that just to tighten up right around about my head and face range. Um, and then I really want to feather that because you're really not getting any softness there. And I'm going to drag that out usually to about, I really bring it to about 50 or so and feather it from there. And then last thing you're going to hit this uh, invert just because you can see over here. And now you're selecting that outside, that out outer vignette. Then I go over to my curves and I take, usually it's like that 60% range. And I just want to start dragging that down again, see what it does. Not that much, probably somewhere in this area because that's starting to bring the focus on me quite a bit when the viewer looks at the image. Um, so comparing between that and that, we're getting there, but I'm starting to think that I still look a little bit dark and lost in the shadow. So I'm going to squeeze these over here, make room, and I'm going to right click the vignette and I'm adding a node and I'm adding an outside node, which is adding, you can see there, whatever's not selected here is going to be selected here. So back into the curves and this is doing the opposite. I'm going to bring that up just to pull myself from that vignette circle just a little bit more. So I, I like this range right there. So now just without those two, you see a huge difference in where the focus is going and where the individual or where the viewer's eyes are going to meet the page. So next we keep moving on here and low soft. I use this because looking at the waveform here, you can see that you're starting to clip some of your reds in the bottom of the waveform. So you can see that the low soft is going to take whatever's at the bottom of your waveform and the more you take it, the higher it's going to go. So I usually do very subtle here just to make sure I'm not clipping somewhere right about there and just giving a little bit of breathing room. You can't really notice a huge difference on this. I mean, if you look, and exaggerate it, you can start to see where it's affected. But if you just do these subtle changes, you can see it a lot in my shadow area in my shirt. That might be clipping just a little bit. So I'm going to keep it right there. And then to go ahead and sharpen the image, I go over here because now we're on the sharpening node and I bring it over here. 
uh, in this blur tab, which doesn't make sense because you don't want to add blur, but you go into your radius and again, seeing the extreme, you start to see that I'm over sharpened like crazy. So less is more here as well. And I'm going to bring it to about 0.48 and you can really see it starts to, in the waveform, you see that you start to get this grittiness the more you bring it in. Um, so I'm going to bring it to about 0.48 is where I like to sit. So we're getting there. This looks fantastic, especially from where we've come. But this, like I said before, these three or two and a half are really going to help develop the look. And glow is something that I love to use. So let's go ahead and type in this glow. And we're going to drag that over here. So off the bat, it doesn't do anything but we need to make some changes. So I go to this composite type and I always select soft light and you're probably like, wow, that looks absolutely terrible. It's because you need to adjust this shine threshold and that's going to select whatever part of the exposure or what, what, whatever part of the waveform and you can see it here as it creeps up, what's going to be affected by this glow and get this halation going on here. So I'm going to drag all the way back and then creep some in. And again, I really want to grab only the sky and my face and anything darker than that, I really kind of want to taper off. So let's keep it, let's keep it way about there. So now we're really starting to get this dreamy, nice filmic halation look that we're going for. But say you're looking at it and you're like, well, that's pretty strong. I don't like that. I, every shot is different. So I go to this global blend tool and I drag it all the way back and then I creep into like how severe I want it. And I really, I, I was digging the look here. So I'm going to sit about right there at 8.5. And that's where the glow tool really like, it just adds this nice, pleasant look to it. And I think that's what gave that dreamy, filmy look that a lot of you guys were happy about. So that is probably going to be a really helpful tool for you. And then I go over into the grain. And grain, you can never have enough of it. If I can type, let's drag over that grain. And the grain that I like to use most is in here this 35 millimeter 400t and i'm feeling the grain on this one it's grainy it's filmy let's crank it up so i'm going to bring that about four and a half is where i like to place it there and then four and a half for the strength as well i usually only hit the grain size and the grain strength just those two are the two that i affect or adjust and it's about four and a half for each is what i did for this and you can see on the waveform you can see how much grittier it gets and that's just the grain that's being added. So that's completely fine. So I like it. And there's a final adjustment that we're going to make, but I was looking at everything and it looks just overall, it looks muddy. Like all the color is the same. There's not too much color separation going on. And I was like, how can I make it look instead of just overall warm? How can I still make myself look warm? The trees look warm and you know, still create some color separation. Well, I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to create a new, new node after that look adjustment. And this is where I just want to target the sky. So we're going to call this node sky and you're going to see how much of a difference this makes once I do it. So I'm going to go into my eyedropper tool there and I'm just selecting, there's a great spot of the sky, just selecting the sky because that's where we're going to make the adjustments. So you can see that as you change these around, it's different luminances. I mean, you want to go for the dark or whatever, but since we just want to select the sky, I'm going to leave that about right there. The saturation is pretty much in a perfect spot as well. So we'll leave that. And you can see that the hue changes as I drag this left and right, but I want to get both of those. So I'm just going to take the width and make it a little bit wider. Just make sure I'm still targeting only the sky and you know, some of the highlights in the water as well. So let's leave it there for now. That'll be about good. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. And then I use the denoise tool and I really, I'm pretty generous with that just to avoid imperfections. So let's keep it right around there, 65. And then I add a little bit of blur as well. Let's do nine. I'm feeling nine. So I want to go in here and one, the sky just looks dim. And I don't like how dim it looks. So it's a highlight. I'm going to bring the gain up and very exaggerated. You can see what it does. I definitely don't want to go that high with it. Um, but let's go up to like, let's go up to there. So just a subtle 
subtly brighter sky. Makes a little bit of a difference, but it's still really warm and muddy. And this is where we're really gonna adjust that. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna cool down just the sky. So really blue, really warm, green, ugly. So I'm just gonna go very slightly. Let's go. Where do I wanna go? And I like somewhere in there. Yeah, I like somewhere right in there. So let's turn that on and off again. And you see the difference that one sky node makes. Now we've got a lot of separation here. I look warm, but it doesn't look muddy and washed out. So that sky tool or that uh, eyedropper tool and just selecting the sky and making those tweaks made a lot of a difference. It's not perfect. I could probably tighten up that selection or that qualifier if I wanted to, but I'm not going to right now for the sake of time. So we've got everything going along quite nicely here. And let's go back to this final adjustment. And this is where like overall kind of global adjustments throughout the entire image you wanna make tweaks on. And this is where I really wanted to create some separation between my highlights and my shadows, primarily on my face, just a little bit more like we did in the contrast node in the beginning. We're gonna do that here in these final adjustments. So I'm gonna go on over to my wheels and into my log wheels. And my log wheels because I can select the range as to what is selected. I mean, if you brighten this highlight up and you select either only a little bit of the highlights or you drag that back and pretty much the entire image is gonna get selected. So you have a lot of flexibility as to where you wanna go. So let's go ahead and brighten up. Again, we're making a little bit more contrast separation. So I'm just gonna bring that up there a little bit more in the highlight wheel. And I'm gonna drag this way down just so you can start to see where it's pulling apart the exposure on my face. And then let's go about right there. So super subtle, but then you turn it on and off and you just see like a little bit of a pop and a little bit more attention just going to myself, a little bit of the uh, water over here, the sky is being pulled up just a little bit more. You kind of get a little bit more separation on this tree as well. And everything is just looking super solid right now. So last but not least, and I do this last because it tends to slow down my computer quite a bit when I add a noise reduction, but you wanna do it before anything. You wanna treat your image and not have it noisy and grainy and so on and so forth before you're great, or you don't want noise while you're grading. That's what I'm trying to say. So go into the noise reduction here and you're gonna find it over here in this little section and I turn my temporal noise reduction, the frames to three. And then where I go into this temporal threshold, I'm gonna bring that always to about like eight or so. So let's just do eight and you already see that. Look at the difference you see in the waveform down here. I mean, when I turn it on and off, it already cleans up a lot of that noise. But then I go over into the spatial threshold and I'll unlink these. So that, now only the chroma is being adjusted. And I'll turn that chroma to about 6.4, let's do 6.4. And there you go, that's what I do for my noise reduction. Again, look at the waveform and how much neater it gets once we turn that on and off. And everything is looking pretty, pretty darn good. And you can see a lot of that noise right here as well. Look at when I turn that on. That neatens up a lot. And now you're just getting, of course, you're gonna get a little bit of fringing. That's totally fine. But I mean, if you look in here as well, yeah. There you go. And then of course, on my hand as well, once I turn that on, it's just overall a lot neater and cleaner. So there we go. That's our look developed there, exactly how I'd done it in last week's video. And let's go ahead and turn all of these off and go through once more. So first we added in that contrast to give it a little bit more pop, separate that waveform a little more, added in some saturation and also helped roll off with these uh, primary wheels, the highlights in the sh uh, the highlights in the shadows, and just making sure our exposure is exactly how we wanted it. Then I go ahead into the balance, and you're just going to white balance your image here. Set yourself up for success when you create your look, which is what we added next. Started to get a lot of that greens, kept the warmth in our face, um, and then we went over 
adjusted some of the skin tones and also took that qualifier and just brightened up the saturation a little bit on that Pentax strap. And then moving in, we really wanted to make some adjustments to the, lot, or to the look that we're going for, really going heavy with the greens and really developing that look. So that's what we did here. We skip over the sky for a second, add in this vignette just to add in the focus on myself being the subject, but then creating that outside node and bringing a little bit back on my face, really rounding off that focus on myself. And then we use the low soft just to bring up that spot in the waveform and sharpen up the image just a little bit more. And then we went into the glow tool to add in that really halo, halation, glowy, nice filmic look. So we added that in there. Of course, adding grain, being very generous with that. Then we made that sky adjustment, just a slight tweak on the sky, take away some of the muddiness and then some final adjustments there, just to bring up the exposure a little bit more. Finishing with the noise reduction. So. That's our look. So if you liked this video, if you found it helpful, if you'd like me to do more color grading tutorials, leave a comment in the comment section down below. I love coloring. It's actually really fun with crayons and on DaVinci Resolve. So I hope to do some more of these and I hope to do them in the near future. But that is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for sticking around and I will see you next week. Class is dismissed.